Hi and welcome back to the Peregrine Dame. This time, I'm in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Hi, I'm Rachel Parsons and I travel alone. All over the world. The owner showed you. The traveling solo doesn't have to be so scary. And that traveling alone doesn't mean you're lonely. So don't wait for somebody to come with you. The world is not going to wait for you. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Be a Peregrine Dame. Be a Peregrine Dame. In 1493, on his second trip to the Americas, Christopher Columbus discovered Puerto Rico. In 1898, Spain ceded the island to the United States under the Treaty of Paris. Since then, the United States government of Puerto Rico have enjoyed a complicated relationship, mutually beneficial in some aspects and conflicting in others. Being a U.S. citizen, growing up I knew we had 50 states and then the U.S. held a handful of territories. But I never really understood the relationship of the territories uh, to the U.S. government versus the states' relationships to the U.S. government. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to come to Puerto Rico, because it's... I just like saying Puerto Rico. Uh, while technically the show is about traveling internationally, Puerto Rico is, is in a strange middle ground along with the other U.S. territories. Uh, Spanish is the predominantly spoken language, and if you ask the U.S. government, it's still definitely a territory. But if you ask the Puerto Rican government, they like to consider themselves a commonwealth country. So I've come here alone, like usual, to see what the deal is for myself. I want to talk to average Puerto Ricans about it, so I've used Couchsurfing.org to find a local willing to host me. And no, Couchsurfing does not sponsor this show. Marcos is just a Couchsurfing rock star. His place is a bachelor pad, for sure. In fact, the apartment he lives in above his parents' home has a kitchen and a bath, but neither one are functioning right now, so... Uh, I have to go use the, the kitchen and the bath in his parents' home and they're lovely people and thankfully they don't mind because Marcos hosts a ton of people every year. He said some years he's hosted 40 people from couchsurfing.org so I guess his parents are used to a constant stream of humans, of strangers coming through their house uh, and they don't really seem to mind, they're very sweet. For travelers, the capital of Puerto Rico is oriented in terms of old San Juan and the modern city. I've decided to stay with Marcos because he lives in an average working class neighborhood called Santurce, about a 15 minute drive from the old town. He picked me up at the airport in the middle of the night when I arrived. Just in the short time I've been here, he's already gone well out of his way to accommodate me. But in case you're one of the few people not staying with Marcos at some point, here's the lowdown on the public transport. The bus system in the modern city of San Juan is very easy to get around on, but it stops running at 11 o'clock at night. And there's only one line that goes from old San Juan into the modern city. So if you don't catch it and you're down here partying, you're going to be stuck. A cab is going to be your only way out. Good thing is, cabs usually run on flat rates, and they're not too expensive. So just make sure you know what you're in for before you get in the cab. The colonial Spanish neighborhood of Old San Juan sits on an island on the north side of the Bay of San Juan. The old city is a romantic jewel, and I've arrived just in time for a party that has natives and tourists alike out to appreciate the good life. The Cambachara Festival takes place all over Old San Juan for three days each October. There are indoor venues and galleries, there are outdoor venues and stages, it's one big party, but it's, it's very festive, very family-oriented. It's easy to navigate Old San Juan on foot, but there is a free trolley, so I decided to give it a try. The convenience of getting around this place better be worth it because the wait for this thing was inordinately long in the heat. The upshot is it's free. Did I mention it's free? absolutely not worth the trouble at all. I could have walked to where I needed to go faster. Between the traffic, the stops, the getting off and on, the only having one exit. There's no rear exit on these little mini buses, so <laughs> it was a waste of time. But I've hopped off on the west end of the neighborhood and soon my annoyance is soothed by the breathtaking views of Castillo San Felipe del Moro and the peaceful gardens wrapped around the museums nearby. 
It's rare, but times like this make me actually wish occasionally that I traveled with somebody. Because old San Juan is very romantic. Kind of makes you wish you had somebody to, to walk hand in hand with. Although it's so hot and humid, that's about all you could stand to do without spontaneously combusting. But, but it really sets a mood. Hey, I haven't said traveling solo never gets lonely. The point is, the fear of loneliness doesn't stop me from doing things I want to do. In any given destination, one of my favorite things to do is to get to know it by getting to know its musical traditions. And I'm lucky enough to be couch surfing with a host that happens to own a bar, which features different live music in different styles every night of the week. So tonight at Marcos's bar in West Rosson, it's bomba night. See how that works? Marcos Vega is a San Juan nightlife fixture. West Rosson is an old San Juan, but caters to locals. So you get a really authentic vibe. The crowd is young. It's full of really hip art. He has live music every night. I don't know what that is, but that's not bomba. This is bomba. And short of going to Western Africa, it's as good as it gets. The bomba band at Nuestro Son canceled, so Marcos points me to nearby New Yorican Cafe, which posts an excellent lineup of musicians throughout the week. Bomba originated in Africa. It was brought to Puerto Rico by African slaves and is wonderfully popular here. As is the next style of music to come up tonight, salsa. The cultural and musical melting pot that is Puerto Rico is always simmering. Having never been in a U.S. held territory, I decided to come to Puerto Rico on my own to see how life here differs from life in the 50 United States. I'm staying with Marcos, a host I found through Couchsurfing.org who runs a bar in Old San Juan. Hi again. He really seems to care about making sure that people who come here to San Juan to surf with him um, enjoy their experience. You accept everybody, except boys, he said. No. Yeah, at that moment, no boys. No boys allowed. Why? Too many problems. Always drunk and begin fight, begin broken something, try to stall in something, you know, I don't know. It's like me, a boy. <laughs> I mean, you don't really go longer than a couple of weeks ever without having somebody else at your house from couch surfing, right? Sometimes I have, I guess, like a one month, two months. People stay with you for a month? Yeah, one month. <laughs> That's difficult, because in the moment say goodbye, it's like a part of the family go. You know? <laughs> hey, bye. He's a social butterfly and goes well out of his way to make sure every guest has an amazing time. He wants to take me to Culebra, so we've headed out early to catch the ferry. Puerto Rico is an archipelago, and two of the most famous outlying islands are Vieques and Culebra. The ferries run from the eastern end of the island in a town called Fa Fajardo. There's some big waves today. And according to Sleeping Beauty over here, Many tour operators and taxi drivers for sure will try to get you on a tour bus or into a taxi and charge you way too much money to get to Fajardo, which is about 45 minutes out from San Juan. But there is a bus. You can start at Rio Piedras in San Juan at the Tren Urbano station and get a bus out here. After that, you hop on a cheap ferry. It takes about an hour to get out to. And right now, I'm wishing that hour was over. I get seasick really easily. I think it's better if I stay up top. I'm gonna barf if I stay down here much longer. Too late. I don't make it to the top. So I'm glad I got to do this again this afternoon. This damn beach better be worth it. We finally dock and hop on one of the ubiquitous shuttles that haul people to each of Culebra's beaches for a few bucks. beaches on Culebra, the most famous is Flamenco. Now, it's full of gringo tourists for sure, but that's because it's the only beach here on the island that has facilities, that has places to eat and restrooms to use. Otherwise, if you're going to come to the island, 
be prepared to pack a lunch and haul your stuff in and out if you decide to go to one of the other beaches. You'll get more privacy, but you'll also be roughing it. Although if you want to make a longer trip out of Playa Flamenco, just bring a tent. There's a campground. I'm glad I'm not roughing it today. I've been off that boat for hours and I'm still actually feeling a little seasick. I can finally hold down food. I have a war of the species in a minute. Marcus is proud to show off his home, but for him, business is never far away. He gets a call from another bar owner, warning him that the mayor of the city is proposing a law that would force most bars to stop selling alcohol by midnight. It's a very bad moment because the Department of Tourism sells the island like a island of the nightlife, you know? And now when he's coming to Old San Juan or Condado or Atorrey, San Dulce, whatever part, not have a nightlife city, <laughs> not yeah, have a nightlife, nothing. It closes at, new, at midnight. The, yeah, the only... And the only and this new law is coming only help the, the hotels and the casino. It's the only people can sell drinks, you know. Uh, that San John thing is a good night life, you know. Yeah. Uh, I prefer hanging with the home people, with the home crowd, checking out the local place, you know. As I film this, the mayor we're discussing is a lame duck, but Marcos is still worried. In like a 22 days, coming the, the new elections, uh, he's maybe win again because he has the control of the ghetto area and all the poor people vote for him because he likes enjoying the welfare and all this area. And it's very difficult to, to make a business here. But we're here. Sand is soft, the water is blue. Beautiful. It almost feels like an island in the South Pacific rather than out on the edge of the Atlantic. It's a beautiful and easy day trip from San Juan. Eventually, we make our way back to the mainland, and I'm still thinking about what Marco said about the difficulty of owning a business here. My first bar, I begin in the 2001. You need money to make a business here. You don't have money, it's very difficult to make your own business. Every month, you need to pay something different tax and something different. Pay to the municipal, pay to the government, stay, pay to everybody. It's no easy. Then there's the topic of statehood. Do you want Puerto Rico to become a state or to stay like it is? Uh, really, really, I don't want to make a state. Uh, I prefer Puerto Rico go independence. It's better, it's its own country, but in this moment, not have the, the way to go, independence because it's the country of the warfare here. If Puerto Rico were to become a state right now, it would have the highest unemployment rate of all of them. As a self-made businessman, this makes Marcos rankle. Everyone I've spoken to is pretty firmly divided. There are the ones who really advocate independence and think that Puerto Rico would be better off uh, going it alone and becoming a completely sovereign country. Then there's... The contingency of the population here who really want statehood who want to join the United States and become a full, a fully functioning state. My name is Cindy Ramirez. I belong to the Progressive Party, which is the one that wants Puerto Rico to become a state. Cindy also saw my post on couch surfing and volunteered to be my guide and buddy for a couple of days. We will not be here without the United States. Not the way that we are right now. If there's anything that makes political discussions easier, it's booze. So Cindy makes our first stop, the Bacardi factory. Although she doesn't drink, her friend Yvette and I certainly do, so it works out well. The factory tour is quick and interesting. They take great pains to minimize their negative impact on the environment, and it's worth it just to learn about their sustainability practices. It smells like molasses. The free drinks at the end don't hurt either. And no, Bacardi doesn't sponsor this show either. So please don't sue me. If Marcos has been the emissary of nightlife in San Juan to me, Cindia is the emissary of food. I'm heading out to meet her in the outskirts of the city to start my culinary education here. Getting around old San Juan is very easy. On foot is perfect. 
but when you're in the center of the modern city of San Juan, you have a lot of options. The buses run regularly, but not very late at night, not after midnight. One of the easiest things to do is hop on the light rail train that runs from Santurce to Bayamón through the heart of the city. But the train system doesn't run after midnight either. Cindy and Yvette pick me up from the station and we end up in a nondescript section of a suburb called Catania. The burger factory started as a small roadside stand. The two women who own it are the only employees and they still buy all their ingredients fresh each morning. Everything's good? Yeah, it's good. Thank you. It's really good. I might be in a coma in two hours. It's so good. <laughs> Basically, they stuff the patties so they end up with meat and then stuff and then meat and then things. I chose roasted red pepper. Half the size of my head. It was, it was my whole head. If you're wondering why I'm eating something that I could find anywhere back home, that's the point. It's intriguing that Puerto Rico simultaneously embraces Americana while clinging so strongly to its own traditions. It takes a full night to sleep off the burger, so we're off to an early start the next morning because one of those traditions has my name on it. Located south of San Juan, between the towns of Caguas and Calle along Highway 184, Bravate is the legendary home of Puerto Rican Sunday dinner. They call them lechoneras. Lechonera because it comes from the word in Spanish, lechon is pig, lechon. So lechonera is the place where they sell lechon. I'm starving though, I'm very excited. <laughs> People like to, on Sundays, just get on their car and just drive to places like this where they sell food and there's music and, of course, there's beer. <laughs> so, so they're happy to come to these places and, and they're like family oriented too. And if it's Christmas time, they can roast up to 100 <laughs> pigs in one day. A day? I mean, on a Sunday. Yeah. And special days like Mother's Day, Father's Day, and any other day. <laughs> But the huge, the huge sale is uh, Christmas, Christmas time, because that's our typical food for Christmas. The highway is lined with lechoneras, and everyone has their favorite. Oh, that one is going, that's a little one. The music. I'm going to go do one up here. First for me, I've never seen. I mean, you always hear of a like a pig on a spit or a roast pig, but I've never. The first time I've ever actually seen one up close and personal. Along with pork, the feast includes pasteles, similar to a Mexican tamale, yuca, green bananas, rice and beans, and the thing I'm not quite sure about: blood sausage. I've never had blood sausage before. I've been a little skeptical. Though. I was always gonna like. Hey, this country isn't for vegetarians. In Puerto Rico, morcilla is made with a lightly spiced rice filling in a sausage casing. Okay. I was skeptical about the blood sausage. I don't know why, because I eat meat. I mean, I'm not vegetarian by any stretch of the imagination. But there's something in my brain that kept going, it's blood, it's blood. It doesn't really remind me of a meat sausage because there's so much spice in it. I think what I was expecting on some level was that coppery taste from blood. But it's, it doesn't taste like that. It was good, but I still had my, my reservations. <laughs> Puerto Ricans don't do anything without music, and it's not a real lechonera without a band. Remember we started out early today? Here's why. If you don't get to Guavate before noon, the lechoneras are standing room only. While Marcos thinks Puerto Rico would be better off on its own, Cindy has her own reasons for supporting Stato. How long were you in the Navy? Twelve years and eight months. What made you want to join the U.S. Navy? It was uh, in the back of my mind for since I was like 15 years old. And uh, it gave me the, a good choice of independence. What rank did you get to? 
E6, enlisted E6. I made E7 when I got out and joined the Navy Reserve here in Puerto Rico. She was stationed at Pensacola in Florida, so she's seen firsthand how life differs in a state. And right now, uh, we have uh, more Puerto Ricans living in the state than living here on the island. Really? It's 3.8 here and 4.5 million living in the states. <laughs> but they're U.S. citizens. Yes, we are. Yeah. Except you can't vote on the president. Correct. While Puerto Ricans enjoy U.S. citizenship, they're not allowed to vote in United States presidential elections. Unless you live in the states. If you live in New York or you live in Texas or California, then you can vote because you're a U.S. citizen. The ones that can vote is us, the ones that are here, living in Puerto Rico. Okay. So, in a way, Cindy is being penalized for her decision to remain in Puerto Rico. While they're allowed to serve in our military, they don't have any, any standard delegation in the United States Congress in Washington, D.C. What's more, because she still works for the U.S. government, Cindy pays personal federal income tax. People like Marcos do not. Considered by some its own country and a territory of the U.S. by others, Puerto Rico is an interesting dichotomy. It's a Caribbean island out on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, a cultural blend of Latin and African influences. Its people are divided by the socio-political questions of the day, and like many places, tourists don't normally get a chance to see more than one facet of the place. Marcos supports Puerto Rico breaking away from the United States and becoming completely independent. Cindia hopes for Puerto Rico to become a full-fledged state. It's not clear that either will happen anytime soon. To see extra scenes and outtakes, head on over to theperegrinedame.com.